Imagine this. Request navigation. Your aircraft has state-of-the-art avionics. Command, stand by. But your map is from the 15th century. Command, please advise, please advise. Neuroscientists are stuck in this harrowing predicament as they try to make their way around the human brain. The first classical map made about a century ago it is still widely used today. Published in 1909, it defined regions on the pinkish-gray organ that control our actions and functions. The fundamental unit of brain organization for the cerebral cortex is what we call a cortical area. So on the map, you could say there's a country called speech, another called short-term memory, another hand movement. Identifying every one of these cortical areas became a major objective of the Human Connectome Project, the HCP, leading the effort a master mapmaker. I consider myself a cortical cartographer. By July of last year, the HCP completed its first phase, a 21st century world map of the brain. We reported the presence of 180 distinct cortical areas. 97 of them were new to brain science. The connectome gives us this opportunity, a really great tool to be able to navigate the human brain. Navigating the brain is more than just naming cities and states. You need to understand the connections between them. The word connectome implies that the fundamentally important thing about brains is connections. This evening, we'll be talking and learning about two different kinds of connections. Structural connections in the brain versus functional connections in the brain. By structural connections, we're really talking about the physical connections. The wires that connect nerve cells. So structural connectivity looks at the regions and the pathways connecting them. The functional connectivity, though, is more about how different parts of the brain work together on an ongoing basis. Brain function arises from conversations that different brain regions are having with each other. A functional map must track living data, conversations flowing through the pathways between brain regions. We collected data from 1,200 individuals. We have them do different tasks in the scanner, things like a memory task, emotions on faces, those same regions of the brain seem to be forming networks. Brain structure is wired by its experience, but we have no idea in what form that wiring diagram has that information. And that's the big puzzle. To see how that translates into individual nerve connections, you need to look much closer than David or Deanna's technology can go. Down to the level of individual neurons. Two quadrillion times smaller. What exactly is two quadrillion times smaller? Well, Jeff's covering would be a city about the size of, say, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That little blur, that little blob there might be Sheboygan or we're not sure. That little blob is a one millimeter cube of brain tissue and it contains a staggering number of neurons. 50,000 nerve cells and about one billion synapses. So right now, there's no way to model an entire human brain by diagramming its micro-wiring. Scientifically for now, we're lost in the foggy limits of brain science. We would need more digital information than is the actual digital content of the world.